So however, in recent centuries is the way of putting that, members of the Protestant community have proposed a different model. They say we should obtain doctrine sola scriptura, Latin by scripture alone, and refuse to give tradition, the magisterium, an authoritative rule. So notice this is, this is trying to establish your position by the form of the argumentation and presentation that you're making. Because this is not what sola scriptura means. It is one of the results of sola scriptura, but it is not what sola scriptura actually means. And so what you do is you make your model the primitive model. And then you say that the Protestants have come along just in the past few centuries with a new way of doing things, and they refuse to give the pre-existing tradition and magisterium an authoritative role. So they're being the novel ones. So you've already made the vast majority of your argument because that's, that's fundamentally what the argument from Rome is, is that we have this 2000 year old tradition. And that's why they don't want to actually have to defend that. They always want to be attacking Sola Scriptura. They do not want to have to provide, uh, they don't want to have to argue on the same ground. There are no common grounds to argue from. There is only one true church and the rest of us are all just pretenders anyways. And so I can see where some of that comes from, but they, they will never ever put themselves on that, on that level. So now obviously Sola Scriptura by scripture alone, I mean scripture alone, that's true. That's what Sola Scriptura means. But is that what sola scriptura actually is? And of course, those of you who've read scripture alone or the Roman Catholic controversy or basically watched any of the 30 some odd debates that we've done with Roman Catholics down through the, um, I was gonna say centuries. <laughs> it's starting to feel that way. Um, it, that, that works for, for Rich, but uh, not quite yet for me. But, um, but uh, if, if you've, accessing that information, uh, then you know that that's not what Sola Scriptura means. That's a horrifically shallow presentation of what Sola Scriptura is. And some people might say, well, you, you don't expect a Catholic in one of their own books to give an accurate and full definition. I did for them. Read the Roman Catholic controversy. Read my presentation of their arguments. I took them straight from them and let people know, here's the challenges. Here's the hard things to respond to. Rome doesn't tend to do that. Uh, Rome, Rome really does not tend to, to tell its people what the real objections are from the other side. So what is sola scriptura? Well, yes, it is scripture alone. And one of the results of the doctrine is that you are to obtain divine revelation, what is binding on the Christian conscience, from Scripture alone. But why? Because of the nature of Scripture. Because of the nature of Scripture. That Scripture is theonistos. It is God breathed. Tradition is not Theonustos. Magisterium is not Theonustos. The church is not Theonustos. Theonustos is the Greek word for God breathed in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is Theonustos. It's the only thing that the church possesses that is Theonustos. And so it's absolutely unique. It is God speaking. Men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That's how Peter described it. As the Lord himself said, have you not read what God spoke to you saying? Reading ancient scripture is having God speak to you. He held men accountable for what had been written 1400 years earlier as if God had spoken it directly to them. You see how that works? And so there is a foundation. There is a necessary foundation to sola scriptura. That is not here. And so 
it makes it sound as if, well, the Protestants just come along and they come up with something no one's ever heard of. So a friend of mine, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, and I know that he watches, and let me say once again, I pray for you regularly and miss you greatly. A uh, dear friend of mine posted this, and he posts things like this because he's a church history scholar. And he put a citation from John Chrysostom up, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday. I think it was yesterday morning. Well, given where he lives, it was <laughs> different time. There's about nine hours between us. It's from homily 33 on the Acts of the Apostles. John Chrysostom, John the golden-tongued, golden-mouthed. And he, listen, just as I read this, ask yourself a question. Today, would a Protestant answer this way or would a Roman Catholic answer this way? Just, just an honest question. Here's what John Chrysostom said, what he wrote. Along comes an unbeliever. I want to become a Christian, but don't know which body of believers to join. There's so much quarreling among you, so many different groups, so much confusion. Which doctrine shall I choose? How shall we respond? Each of you, he says, claims to speak the truth. Now let's just stop for a second. Let's stop for a second. You already read all of it, didn't you? I know you did. <laughs> you, could, you just couldn't wait. This is the exact argument that Roman Catholic apologists use. I, what year was it? I think it was, I think it was 1994. I attended the debate that took place, a three-on-three -three debate somewhere in California. And it was the White Horse Inn guys and one other dude that I'd never, no, no. It was White Horse Inn guys against Patrick Madrid, Robert Genis, and a Roman Catholic dude that I had never heard of before. And I think I only heard of him once after that. And then sort of like Art Sippo, he just was beamed back up to the mothership after he, <laughs> his mission was completed. Um, and, and for Art Sippo, there's more to that, what I just said, <laughs> than you actually know. Anyway, um, but it was a three-on-three -three debate on Sola Scriptura. This is exactly what the Catholics are saying. Patrick Madrid. Sola Scriptura, blueprint for anarchy. How are you supposed to know? Robertson Genes. Um, Tim Staples. Trent Horn. Carl Keating. Jimmy Aiken. All of them. And back in those days... Jerry Matatix too. <laughs> I keep reminding you guys of that. I know you, I know you wish people would, <laughs> would stop doing that, but I'm, I'm old enough to remember, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep reminding you. This is their argument. There's so much quarreling among you. See, if you had the magisterium, if you had the infallible pope, you wouldn't have all this quarreling. And I just go, have you, have you seen what's going on within Roman Catholicism recently? You've got all sorts of quarreling. All sorts of it. I mean, you have just as wide a range of expressions of belief within the Roman Catholic communities have as you have outside of it. You know that. Be honest. Be honest. So many different groups. So much confusion. Which doctrine shall I choose? Each of you says, each of you, he says, claims to speak the truth. So, well... This is the argument against sola scriptura, right? So what does Chrysostom say? Quite so, Chrysostom says, but that's in our favor. If we told you to be convinced by mere arguments, you might well be bewildered. However, if we asked you to believe the scriptures, and if the scriptures are plain and true, the choice is easy for you. Whoever agrees with Scripture, he is the Christian. Whoever fights against Scripture, he is far from the rule of belief. Ah, uh, what? How how could someone writing at the beginning of the fifth century, end of the end of the fourth, beginning of the fifth century, how how could someone say, well, the way to find out is to go to the Scriptures? 
Because all my Roman Catholic friends say, but, but you can't. There's all those different interpretations. It seems like Chrysostom believes actually the scriptures are what? Plain and true. Hmm. I am, uh, I am reminded of a event in 1999 over in San Diego when I debated Father Mitchell Pacwa on the subject of Sola Scriptura. And I had planned to do this. This was, this was not something I just thought up during the debate itself. But at the end of the debate, when I had my closing statement, and I had even timed this out to know how long it would take, I had a large silver book bag. It's still in my office, actually. And I, I brought it out next to the podium and I started taking big, big books out of it. And so I got the cans and decrees of the Council of Trent and the documents of Vatican II. And uh, there's, a, there's a book that gives you the, all the citations in the documents of Vatican II that, you know, and the Code of Canon Law and all these official magisterial documents and I piled them up next to the podium. And I said, so what Rome is telling us is that if all I have is my Bible, I can't really understand Romans 5.1. Therefore, I haven't been justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But if I have these, then I have clarity about Romans 5.1. But the clear and obvious reality is these obscure Romans 5.1, they do not clarify Romans 5.1. In fact, they introduce all sorts of things that no apostle ever dreamed of as a vitally important interpretational lens and everything else. That illustration remains absolutely true today. It remains absolutely true today. Nothing's changed. And so here you've got John Chrysostom and it seems that he believed the scriptures are plain and true. Now he knew that there were heretics. He knew there were people that, that twisted scripture. But the reality is he recognized that it is fidelity, consistent fidelity to that which is theonoustos that identifies the Christian church. And so when we, when we compare that with what Jimmy Aiken is saying, we find a huge chasm because he goes on in the next paragraph to say, if this idea were true, now notice he has not, actually told us what the idea is. He's, he's, he's mentioned one result of believing in Sola Scriptura, that Scripture is the only thing that we possess from God that is theonustos. And well, the results of that is, then you gain your doctrine from Scripture alone. That's one result. That's not the doctrine. This man's a former Protestant. He knows this. He knows this. If this idea were true, if we had to prove every doctrine by scripture alone, then we would have to prove the doctrine of sola scriptura this way. In other words, sola scriptura would need to meet its own test. We would need to prove by appealing only to scripture that we are to exclude tradition and magisterium from having authoritative roles. Evidently, this is the big argument. This is the big gotcha moment. And I find this to be incredibly weak argumentation and it would not have any impact on anyone who actually understands the doctrine of soul scriptura is. Because what's being said here is let's assume what we have yet to prove and that is the existence of this unchanging tradition and magisterium, which, <laughs> which given today with Pope Francis is sort of like, you really want to go there? <laughs> you really... Your guy, have you listened to your guy? Do, do, you, do you hear what your guy's teaching? He defines the magisterium for you. He defines tradition for you. 
Are you making the connection there? But you, you assume these things, and then what the argument is, is I'm going to demand that one of the results of sola scriptura, which is that true doctrine comes from scripture, that you have to prove that to my satisfaction, and that's what the entirety of the doctrine is, rather than what the argument would, would have to be. And that is, I as a Roman Catholic will say that scripture is theonustos, but I will then join that which is theonustos, that which is not theonustos, and I will actually subject that which is theonustos to non-theonustos authority for interpretation and definition that is tradition and the magisterium. That's what they are positively doing, but to have to, to, to not have to prove that because it, it's so obviously a false argument. You're taking that which is God breathed and subjecting it to that which is not God breathed. That's obviously an error. And that's what Rome does. But to hide that, what you do is you take a step back and you try to make this the central aspect. You prove sola scriptura from scripture. Well, once you recognize that sola scriptura is the teaching that scripture is theanustos and therefore is of ultimate authority, then that's pretty easy to prove from scripture, isn't it? But what they're doing is, well, I want you to prove one of the results without proving the foundation. And it's sad that it's effective with so many Protestants. All that tells us is that there, that many people who are technically Protestants are not Protestants of conviction, not Protestants of reading, not Protestants of deep thought, and haven't been challenged to be such. But we're challenging you to be such. So we'll pick up with that, that paragraph because that, I went through that fairly quickly, but that's important. That's important. As long as you understand what the doctrine is, you can see that Rome's arguments against it are always straw men. They always are. They, they, they can't actually argue the actual doctrine itself.